I've been wanting to do this for quite some time, dive into the topic of iodine. Iodine is so controversial in the thyroid world because we have one group saying over here that it's going to cause Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. And you have another group saying that we're actually seeing reverse T3 issues reversed. We're seeing people come off of their thyroid medication naturally by using iodine. We're seeing breast cancer being basically eradicated, prevented, can we say that? Cured, can we say that? We're having women with metastatic breast cancer live beyond their three to six months that they were given and live four to six years through the use of iodine. Now this is coming from Dr. Brownstein's work, Dr. David Brownstein and Dr. Abraham, two leading, leading doctors in this field of iodine. So we have to give them all of the props for doing the research, for diving in. And if you've ever listened to an interview with Dr. Brownstein, which I'm still trying to get him on my podcast. Hello, Dr. Brownstein. If you've ever listened to him interviewed, you will just hear his knowledge and expertise and wisdom and experience come out story after story. So just a little bit about him from what I know. This would be much better coming from him. But from what I know, Dr. David Brownstein, he started in conventional medicine. And he started seeing more and more of his patients come in needing thyroid hormone replacement, thyroid medication. So he was putting all of these patients on thyroid medication and he was thinking, yeah, you know, their symptoms were improving. They were getting better, but why do we continue have, having to use this medication to get people better? You know, there has to be a different way. Why is there there's such a high rate of hypothyroidism, of thyroid disease? Now, of course, he was up in Michigan. There is such thing as the goiter belt. I'm in it as well near the Great Lakes, all through the Great Lakes, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, on the other side of the Great Lakes into Canada, that is the goiter belt. And we see depletion of iodine in the soil, as well as it's a huge manufacturing area. It's on the lake, um, tons of industry. So we're, we just see a lot of hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's up here, a lot of goiters, a lot of thyroid nodules. And quite honestly, it's also the cancer belt. And we're going to get into what, how iodine is important for certain types of cancer, especially the glandular cancers like thyroid cancer, breast, prostate, ovarian, and pancreatic. So Dr. Brownstein will actually go into, when you hear him speak, or if he's ever on my podcast, he'll go into a story of when he was in med school, they would see pancreatic cancer here and there, but it wasn't in the droves that we're seeing now. We're seeing this huge increase in breast cancer, huge increase in all cancers, and especially uh, pancreatic cancer, which is a big, bad one, big, bad, scary cancer. So all of these cancers, Dr. Brownstein says, ties back into iodine. So when I look at all of the evidence in front of me, everything presented, I have to lean on the side of using iodine in moderate to sometimes high amounts. And the reason being is when you look at the fact that just like I always say, every single cell in our body has a receptor site for T3. Every single cell in our body has a receptor site for iodine. Now, if you look at the periodic table, you will see that iodine, bromide, chloride, and fluoride are all close together. And those are the halides. Now, we need iodine and we need chloride. So look at your, um, look at your CMP you'll see chloride being measured on there. So we need iodine, we need chloride. We do not need bromide or fluoride. They are toxic chemicals, they're toxic elements that we know will take the place of iodine on the cell receptor site. So your thyroid gland that needs iodine and it needs it to convert, it's iodine we know, we cannot dispute, even the anti-iodine critics out there cannot dispute that iodine is necessary for T4 to T3 conversion. So in order to convert T4 into its active form of T3, we need iodine. The thyroid needs iodine. If we are exposed to 
fluoride, which, hey, how many of us use fluoride toothpaste still? How many of you have had fluoride treatments as a kid from your dentist? How many of you are still going to the dentist receiving those little fluoride treatments? Remember those little pink pills that you used to pop in your mouth and it would like turn your teeth pink and they were fluoride pills? Now think about where your thyroid gland is. So every time we are exposed to fluoride, it becomes toxic to our thyroid gland and it will actually bind to and take the place of iodine in that receptor site. Same with bromide. So bromide is highly toxic. We are exposed everywhere. It's a fire retardant. It's in our clothes, it's in our furniture, it's in, it's in our carpetings, it's in our cars. It's in our cell phones, it's in your sodas, especially if you're drinking Mountain Dew. God forbid you're still doing that. But we're, we find bromide everywhere and the body can actually become bromide toxic. It can become fluoride toxic and bromide toxic. So tying this back into, we're gonna come back to thyroid more, but as Dr. Brownstein says, tying this back into breast cancer, he actually had a patient, he's had a couple patients, but one patient in particular that he gives the story of she was wearing a white color, you know, creamy color nightgown to bed. And her, she had metastatic breast cancer. And she was working with Dr. Brownstein using higher doses of iodine. I believe he was using about 100, 100 milligrams of iodine with her. And she was actually purging fluoride from her breast. So it was leaking out yellow. It was staining her, her nightgown. And she brought the nightgown in to Dr. Brownstein and, and they tested it and they realized she was actually detoxing from an, a, basically a fluoride toxicity, fluoride and bromide toxicity. I believe it was fluoride that came out of her breast, not bromide, because they tested it and they were amazed. So as iodine comes in and binds to its receptor site that it is supposed to bind to, then we see the body in some people will excrete the toxic chemicals of fluoride and bromide. Now there's also, Dr. Brownstein makes a connection to lead and mercury. While lead and mercury do not share an affinity for that receptor site, that he has seen some instances where when a person is taking, doing an iodine protocol of his using a higher dose of iodine, that they will detox from lead and mercury because those are the two heavy metals that he sees over and over and over again in his practice. I have talked about it before on my podcast regarding mercury. I've spoken with Karen Martell about that. We see mercury toxicity all the time. And if you're still walking around with amalgam fillings, those silver fillings, you are off gassing mercury into your body. Mercury will cross the blood brain barrier. And mercury is also very toxic to the thyroid. So we're finding with iodine, we can use higher doses of iodine and it's not a chelator. So if you came back with high levels of mercury, we would use chelating agents or binders to bind to that and excrete it out of the body. And this takes a while, but iodine does help with that. Now, one book in particular that I recommend you getting, if you want to dive more into this, is The Iodine Crisis, What You Don't Know About Iodine Can Wreck Your Life. This is by Lynn Farrow. Forward is by Dr. Brownstein. So he even deep, goes into a deep dive on everything that I, well, she, but also Dr. Brownstein helps write this. She refers back to his work quite often. Goes into how to test for it, um, iodine loading test. You know, there, there's a point where you really don't have to test. You just assume that everyone is iodine deficient because of the increased rate of hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's and also the increased reverse T3 issues that we have. Now, according to Dr. Brownstein, reverse T3, high reverse T3 is a product of iodine deficiency. So all of you who are on T4 only and you cannot get T3 or you're on just an itty bitty bit of T3 and you really feel that you have a conversion issue. Of course, we're looking at all those other cofactors. We're looking at your iron. 
We're looking if you have high insulin. We're looking to see if you're estrogen dominant. We're looking at your gut, all of the magnesium, selenium, all those cofactors, but we have to look at iodine because if you are iodine deficient, you most likely will have a high reverse T3 issue and a conversion issue. Iodine is so potent that we can actually apply it directly to cancer affected areas. So in prostate cancer, they can actually apply iodine directly to the prostate as well as the breast. And we're seeing decreased rates of cancer. And we're seeing some of the nodules on the thyroid gland. People will also rub it on their necks, put it directly on the on the spot where their thyroid is, they'll put it on their breast tissue, they'll put it on their prostate, and we are seeing a decrease in cancer rates, which is pretty significant. We're seeing psoriasis disappearing, which is another auto form of autoimmune. Oftentimes we have, we see psoriasis with Hashimoto's. One story, 40 years of psoriasis disappears through the use of iodine. Another story, fibrocystic breasts. This is in the book, so you can get the book and read it. Wanda, suffering from painful fibrocystic breasts. And he, Dr. Brownstein talks a lot when you hear him interviewed again, talks a lot, a lot about fibrocystic breast disease. 90% of American women have it now. It's definitely been an increase in the last 20 years, and it is tied to iodine deficiency. As many of you know, fibrocystic breast disease manifests as lumps or breast tenderness. It can be cyclical with the menstrual period. And then in advanced stages, one can have pain throughout the month. So this woman, Wanda, who is suffering from FBD, is said she used iodine supplementation. The results have been amazing. I lost a full cup size of painful swollen tissue. The texture of my breasts completely changed. They become very soft. I'm 95% done. I don't know if the last remaining area is scar tissue or not. I've been diligent about supplementing for a while now. I've gotten complacent and cocky, so I need to get back on board with this. That was her story on fibrocystic breasts. Iodine is, is, is emerging for me personally as a very usable tool in our tool chest to help heal hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's naturally. And I do believe it can be done with the proper regimen. Now, one thing you have to remember when you are using iodine, and if you plan to use iodine, you want to work with an experienced practitioner who's actually done some research more than, more than this, I have read other uh, books of Dr. Brownstein's, but this is, the, this is like the consumer user-friendly one, the iodine crisis. And she refers so much to Dr. Brownstein's work that I, I think this is really great. I really think this is a, a great one to start with. So I think that this is a promising, promising tool in our tool chest. And I shouldn't even use the word promising because that makes it sound like it's still on the forefront of research. Like we still have to look more into it. No, we, iodine has been around forever. Uh, if you listen to Dr. Brownstein, once again, he will go back and refer back to the use of iodine way, way back in the day, hundreds of years ago, because it's a natural cure-all. Right, we can use it for so much more than just cancer and thyroid disease. So we are seeing hair loss, as many of you are dealing with, hair loss reversed, iodine. We are seeing cancer, metastatic breast cancer, prostate cancer, thyroid cancer, psoriasis, Graves' disease symptoms improve, hair regrowth, less nighttime urination, Paget's disease, a kind of breast cancer affecting the skin, 
That was improved in three months of iodine use. Extreme bladder issues and pain, fertility issues, low basal temperature, which is going to tie back to still being in a hypo state or having reverse T3 conversion issues. History of irregular periods, fibrocystic breasts, ovarian cysts, mood and energy issues now on the ment. Increased testosterone levels. So for my men, I'm always talking about the tie-in to hormones and how if you have hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, and it's not optimized, your thyroid is not optimized, your testosterone will most likely be low and your estrogen will most likely be high. And ladies, we're seeing a lot of low testosterone, a lot of low testosterone in you. And if your thyroid is off, your hormone levels will be off, and it could all tie back to having an iodine deficiency. So it actually may not be, and it might blow your mind right now, but it might not be that you need more thyroid medication. It might be that you need iodine. And then the thyroid replacement therapy medication that you are on can work. Or if you are one of my natural path, natural path, not naturopath, natural path patients, then yes, we have to use iodine for that conversion, for support of the thyroid gland, for support of all your other tissues and cells that need iodine. And we might work at using a higher dose on you to get the effect that we actually want to get. That's the key, is getting the effect that we want to get. So we want to see testosterone levels go up in a man. This one says, there is no question iodine increases testosterone. I've raised my free and total testosterone 60% since starting iodine 12 months ago. He got monthly blood work. Still have a ways to go to get into my range for my age. I'm now taking 100 milligrams of iodine. There is no doubt iodine has been the most important component. I took a very conservative approach initially and started with single milligram level doses. That's what we normally do. We'll start people off. It's 150 micrograms is the recommended daily allowance of iodine. Dr. Brownstein uses, we'll usually start with like a, a six and then we'll go 12, well, 6.25 and then 12.5, go up to 25. Then we'll go up from there to 50. Some people do great hanging out at 25 or 50. Some people in extreme cases will go up to 100. Dr. Brownstein refers back to the woman I told you with metastatic breast cancer. She lived four years instead of the three to six months she was given. He said that the only regret he has is not using a higher dose with her. He would have used two and 300 milligram doses in the hundreds instead of, I think he brought her up to 100 and left her there. Definitely improved her quality of life. Definitely improved her, her time of life. It extended her life beyond what the doctors gave her to live. But he said that he would have actually used higher, higher, higher than that. That's just a side note. But only experienced noticeable changes when getting to 50 to 100 milligrams. This is the, the testosterone guy. Scale up as quickly as possible while keeping detox manageable. Heart rhythm disorders, AFib improves. AFib improves. Wrist pain, allergies disappearing, cherry angiomas falling off. Those are those little, those little red, like little skin taggies on your skin. Hair loss stopped, body temperature normalizes. Now we know that hair loss increases with what? Hypothyroidism. So if the thyroid gland needs iodine, or even if you don't have a thyroid gland, you're, if you're sitting there saying, well, what if I had a total thyroidectomy? What if I had a partial thyroidectomy? Uh, I said all of your cells, all of your cells need iodine. So we still have to use it and we still have to use it for that T4 to T3 conversion. Because if you did have a total thyroidectomy, you might still only be on T4. And if you did have a total thyroidectomy, you might be on T4 and a little bit of T3 or NDT. You still need iodine to push that T4 that you're taking over into T3 to stop and, and will decrease and eventually permanently stop 
the hypothyroid symptoms that you're experiencing, like hair loss and body temperature normalizing. So let me read you this one. The main benefit I've noticed so far is the cessation of hair loss when I wash my hair. How many of you have freaked out when you've washed your hair and got clumps of hair in your hand or saw it in the bottom of the drain or it comes out in your hairbrush and you're counting every single hair that's fallen out of your head because it's not stopping and you're, it's freaking you out and you're getting chest pains and you're getting anxiety because you're sick of losing hair and you're afraid of going bald. Cessation of hair loss when I wash my hair. My temp has risen to almost normal. I have excess fat on my tummy, which was cold to touch. A Chinese medicine practitioner told me this should be warm. I actually, I, I, I know somebody who had that same bizarre, I mean, it was, it was crazy. You would touch his stomach and it would be ice cold, like as if he laid on an ice rink for 10 minutes. It would be ice cold. A Chinese medicine practitioner told me this should be warm, but I was unsuccessful in warming it up until I started the iodine. Now it is toasty warm to touch. I'm hoping this means it might disappear in due course. Now, let me go back to the person that I knew. And I'm just piecing this together right now, by the way. I didn't pre-plan this story tying into the, the cold belly story that I'm reading in the book to you. So he made a major switch in his life changing off of processed foods. So the man that I knew with the cold belly was eating sheets and, and I mean, just anything, working in the oil field, made a total change in his life, clean eating, working out, um, making his food to take to work, you know, just clean, clean, clean foods. And now he doesn't have that anymore. So he lost weight. And here, so here's my, my tie to iodine is that when you switch from those fake foods, the processed foods, the processed foods that contain a ton of garbage in them, that contain bromide, just like Mountain Dew, we know contains bromide. Brominated vegetable oil is everywhere. Everywhere we're seeing vegetable oil, brominated vegetable oil, that is bromine. Switching over into clean eating, chicken, grass-fed meat, um, jasmine rice, sweet potatoes, baked potatoes. Now you are cleaning up your diet where it can detox from all of that bromide. And I don't know if he took an iodine supplement or not, but I think maybe just a natural increase of iodine occurred because again, you're removing that competitor for the receptor site. You're taking out the bromide that you're consuming on a daily basis from the brominated vegetable oil and whatnot. And now the iodine that you are getting can bind to that receptor site on the cell and do its job and do its job. So you're losing body fat, you're losing weight, thyroid's regulating, processed food is out, bromide goes down, and then the iodine can actually get to where it's supposed to get to. Painful breast hypothyroidism, 50 pounds excess weight resolved. Woman of 54 says she was 50 pounds overweight, diagnosed as hypo, but the medication never did anything. Then I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I began taking iodorol, which is a form of, I so you have multiple forms of iodine. We'll, we'll talk about that in one moment. Iodorol because it was the main part of my integrative doctor supplement protocol. I experienced a little brain fog detox when I started, partially because I skipped the salt water part of the iodine protocol. Then I started it and all the brain fog went away. Gradually, my weight just came down to normal. I was so thrilled that when I had an all woman birthday party, I bought little bottles of iodorol as party favors. I'm one of those people who tells strangers about iodine because it changed my life. So when you are taking higher doses as we're going up in your doses, you have to do a salt loading protocol, which is a, a, about a quarter table, quarter teaspoon of I like Redmond's real salt dissolved in warm water and you take that a couple times a day. You should also be taking vitamin C when you're doing iodine. So if you do get a little bit of that detox, kind of brain foggy, kind of feeling icky, for lack of a better word, you can do more salt and then you can also take 
a day or two off of the iodine and do vitamin C because vitamin C will then flush the iodine through. But you definitely want to make sure that you're drinking water, flushing your kidneys, doing that salt loading protocol, especially as you are going up in your dose of iodine. Now, they talk about side effects that occur when first doing iodine. And this is where I believe, this is my opinion, remember, my opinion plus research. This is where I believe that iodine gets a bad rap in hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. Many people out there will say, well, Hashimoto patients shouldn't do iodine because it'll make them worse. Okay, could it also be, let me propose this to you, could it also be that it is binding to these toxic elements like chlorine in our water and bromide in our clothing and furniture and cell phones and fluoride that you're still brushing your teeth with? Could it be that it's binding to these and giving almost like a detox reaction, like a Herx reaction, like you're just getting a little bit flu-like, icky feeling? But if you do this salt loading protocol, it escorts the bromide out of the body fast. So they actually use this when Gulf War soldiers experience bromide toxicity from the experimental use of pyridostigmine bromide, supposedly a nerve gas protectant. The army used a salt solution IV as a detox agent. So salt water captures the bromide so it doesn't lodge back in the system. So if you take the salt loading protocol, you should prevent most, if not all, of the bromide detox effect. Some doctors even recommend using the salt loading procedure before starting the iodine supplementation. So sometimes we will start the salt loading protocol for a week, then start the even low-dose iodine, just to get that into the person's body to start escorting some of the bromide out. Dr. Brownstein also has another book called Salt Your Way to Health. Just on the benefits of sea salt, just on the, well, I shouldn't say sea salt, Redmond's Real Salt, just on the benefits of using salt, not iodized salt from Morton's, but actual real Redmond's sea salt, Redmond's Real Salt to improve many, many different aspects of life. That's another book. We're going to say that we're sticking on with the iodine. So you can, you can use the salt method, salt loading protocol. You can reduce your iodine dosage and build up gradually, which is what I do with my patients and what we're going to be doing more of. And then pulse dosing, meaning take no iodine for 48 hours to flush the kidneys and other detoxification pathways, and then you restart. Many iodine users have found this tip very effective. And then some report feeling a kind of euphoria after the 48-hour detox rest period. So you want to use unrefined salt for this. And this is the Redmond's Real Salt or Celtic Salt. Those are the, the best known brands. Now, what if you get side effects from the iodine supplementation? So if you're working with someone that has studied iodine then you'll be okay because it's just a matter of taking off, using more salt, or throwing in some vitamin C. It, it is literally that simple. So when someone gets that um, reaction and you're hypothyroid and you think that you're getting worse, the question is, are you? So if you believe, if your thyroid was actually getting worse from you taking iodine, that would continue after you stop the iodine. All of the iodine detox reactions stop usually within 48 hours of you taking a break from taking the iodine, doing more of the salt loading protocol, or taking in excess vitamin C for those couple of days. If iodine was really making your thyroid worse, then what you would experience after stopping iodine would be a continuation of the hypothyroid symptoms. It would never get better, never get better. It would just stay that way, you'd be hypo. Whereas if you are just experiencing that brain fog, that sluggishness, and you increase the salt, you back off on the iodine, you do some vitamin C and it goes away, then it was your body's detox reaction not your thyroid slowing down even further. 
I took iodine for my breasts and my family doctor said my TSH blood test showed it made me hypothyroid. So we're going to go into this. Elevated TSH blood tests have been reported numerous times in people supplementing with iodine. This doesn't necessarily mean that you are going hypo. TSH changes can mean your body is changing as it accommodates this abundance of a precious nutrient. Usually the reference range for free T3 and T4 remain normal or optimal. Elevated TSH can be another post-scarcity effect as the body makes more iodine absorber tissues to absorb the new bounty of iodine supplementation. The ATP cofactors have also been used to help TSH return to normal levels. So now we're seeing, and there's another story here that I can uh, read to you as well of how it, iodine actually made the thyroid, the master regulator, it made the thyroid gland steal the iodine in the bloodstream that had been going to the breasts. This woman was taking just a little bit of iodine, but the thyroid being a little bit low, sped up the, when it, when it got some iodine, it sped up its metabolism and it made her body need more iodine. So now you're taking iodine to improve your thyroid. The thyroid loves it. I, always, I, I've, I have always said, even before diving into the research, I have always said that iodine to the thyroid is like miracle Grove for your grass, right? You put it on and it's just like, oh, it just loves it. It loves it. Now it grows and it works properly and it looks all pretty. So iodine for your thyroid is like miracle Grow for your grass. So you want to use a little bit of it Maybe you want to use a little bit more of it and, and, your, and your thyroid gland will just soak it up and thank you for it. Of course, we want to watch for going up too high, too quickly in your dose. And you want to be working with someone so we can balance out the, the reactions. But it, it has just, I mean, sometimes I'm speechless from it, right? It has just so much good to it. So if that TSH goes up, it could be the iodine stealing theory where your, your thyroid gland just soaks it up. You're, sometimes we see TSH levels fluctuate. I just answered this question from someone the other day where free T3 and free T4 were actually elevated almost into a Graves disease state, but TSH was elevated as well. Now, we didn't dive into, this was, of course, just online, we didn't dive into whether or not she was taking iodine, which that could have been, now in hindsight, that could have been a reaction. My initial thought was no one tested her for TSI, which are the Gray's disease autoimmune markers, just like TPO and TGA are the Hashimoto autoimmune disease markers. So we still had to test her for Gray's disease, and it could be kind of a swing kind of a thing. <laughs> a swing thing where excess thyroid hormone is being detected in the free T3 and free T4, but yet she's on her way back into a Hashimoto state from Graves because Graves always swings to Hashi. Or it could be that she's been taking iodine, which is making her thyroid gland work better, hence the high free T3, free T4. But it's just kind of stressing out the pituitary, it's, it's, the body's detecting some kind of stress and the TSH is just changing as it accommodates the abundance of iodine since free T3 and free T4 are staying okay. I could go through this and through this and through this, dry eyes and vaginal dryness, again, AFib, more energy, PMS and fatigue gone, uterine fibroids, fibrocystic breast disease, again, Depression, puffy face, fatigue. Here's a guy's story. Increased energy, no migraines since starting iodine. It's just amazing the story after story after story that you hear from people taking iodine, and it's the world's oldest medicine. It's the most, Dr. David Brownstein calls iodine the most misunderstood nutrient but it is the world's oldest medicine.
So when asked, Dr. Brownstein also says, if he were to be forced back into the conventional system, but he was told that he could take one thing with him, what would it be? And it would be iodine. I always say, if you, you know, said I had to go to a, a desert island, if I was only able to take one supplement, it would be vitamin D. Now in hindsight, right, vitamin D is definitely going to increase my immune system. But if I'm on a desert island, I can probably lay out a little bit. Not worry about wrinkles because I'm on a desert island. Not necessarily worry about skin cancer because I'll have my iodine with me, which will be more protective against cancers, mainly of the glandular cancers. But I'm thinking, thinking I'm going to get a little bit of skin cancer protection from it as well. Before I let you go, types of iodine. So we have Lugol's. So J. Crow Lugol's solution. That comes in uh, dropper and encapsulated. We have Iodorol. We have Designs for Health, Iodine Synergy. And there is a new spray iodine that I am trying from a company in Canada that I will keep you updated on. And I'll give you an affiliate link on once I get it and I set it all up uh, because it's pretty awesome and it's really cheap. Now that's more for low dosing, like when you first start off. So I'm still but low to high dosing. I'm, I'm up to three milligrams right now per day. And the nice thing about this new company is that it has a specific formula for thyroid. So it's iodine and iodide. And it is, since you're spraying it in your mouth, you're spraying it in your throat, it's killing a whole bunch of germs. So you can actually put it on, you know, if you have areas of psoriasis, acne, any kind of skin tags. So it is topical without staining like Lugol's does. Lugol's will stain if you put it, and don't use the iodine skin test. That's not accurate. If you want to test your iodine, this is something that I still can't 100% land on for you. We can do serum and see, I mean, if serum is coming, but if, if your blood iodine test is coming back low, you're gonna be low. We can also do an iodine loading test where you take 50 milligrams of iodine and we measure how much comes out in a 24 hour urine catch. And we can also just do a 24 hour urine catch iodine with the premise of if, if that is high, if you're excreting a large amount of iodine, then the dose that you are taking is, is adequate to maybe a little bit high, but we rather have you excrete about 95% of your iodine. So if you're, if the excretion that we're reading is, is low, then your body is holding on to all of that iodine that you gave it beforehand because it needs it. So that's more closer to the iodine loading test. I apologize. That's closer to the iodine loading test. So we can do serum, we can do a 24 hour urine, or we can do an iodine loading test, or we can just use iodine and see how you feel and see if it doesn't bring down your reverse T3, improve your hypothyroid symptoms, give you more energy, help you lose weight, help you with hair loss, help protect you against some cancers, help with goiter and nodules, and work together to adjust your dose. So new insights on iodine. It's a good one. It's a good one. So I'll give you links and I'll give you lists and all of that good stuff. Hopefully, we'll be working together to implement this critical, critical element into your daily supplement protocol. There's just so much more I want to say, but I'll stop so as to not use up our entire time talking about the wonderful benefits of iodine. I will continue to do more research and I will continue to bring it to you. But for now, just take this as iodine has potential to be a natural Hashimoto hypothyroid cure, support, uh, a conversion factor that is imperative, or we could say an element that can reverse all those horrendous symptoms of hypothyroidism, even if you are on medication. 
So even if we're not doing it completely naturally, we can help your med that you are on work better because we're introducing those cofactors and introducing a very, very important element to the body that the body needs in order to function properly. I even give iodine to my dog, by the way. Spray it on his food. You don't want to use it in the seafood, sea, seaweed, kelp form. You want to get the good brands, like I said, J. Crow's Lugol's, Iodorol, Designs for Health Iodine Synergy, and this new company that I will get back to you on because I'm still in the trial stages of it. 